Now we are. Hey, AP1, you got your lab practical? Don't fail it. All right. <laughs> Sorry, we're <laughs> trying to be nice. Okay, so here's the front of the cat. There's a lot to know about, not only the organ systems, but like you have things like cavities, you have regions, you have quadrants, you have membranes. Um, so just so much stuff. So let's try to do the best we can here. The whole front part here is referred to as ventral. Well, that kind of makes sense because we have our lungs here and we ventilate with our lungs, right? We ventilate our oxygen. So I think ventral ventilation. Then the back, you have dorsal. And I think of a dorsal fin on a shark or something. So that helps me remember that it's on the back. Um, technically, dorsal and ventral apply to animals. For human beings, we tend to use anterior and posterior. All right, so if you read that in the book, don't get confused or anything like that. Then we have stuff like superior and inferior, right? So like, let's look at this cute dead kitty tongue, right? That is superior. That tongue is superior to the trachea, right? Because it's above. And then you have stuff like inferior. So the trachea is inferior to the tongue, all right? Then you have like medial and lateral, all right? So these flappy things, which are the lungs, they are going out, they're going out this way, so that's lateral, okay? So the lungs are lateral to the heart. The heart, on the other hand, like if we're going towards the spine, there's nothing more medial than your vertebral column, then you're going medial, so the heart is medial to the lungs, all right? Then if we're talking about our extremities, so like our hands and our feet, right? We use words like proximal and distal, and I, I know it's confusing, but don't worry. So what it comes down to is if I'm going away from my torso, I'm gonna to use the terminology distal. If, I, if I'm going towards my torso, I'm gonna to use the word proximal. So let's use the thumb and the elbow to illustrate that. My thumb is distal from my elbow. So it's like I started at my elbow and I had to go away, so that's distal. So my thumb is distal from my elbow. Now if I change that around, I could say my elbow is proximal from my thumb. So I'm starting at my thumb and now I'm going this way to get to my elbow. So of course I use the word proximal, all right? So that takes care of that. But then we have superficial and deep, all right? So let's look at this little cute pouch. That's our stomach. Now if I lift that up, ooh, lots of gore, right? Then I see this cute little faeta meat behind it. But I'm not gonna use regular language like behind it. No, I gotta use deep. So like the fahida meat is, <laughs> and it's okay if y'all laugh, okay? It is deep to the stomach. The stomach is superficial to the pancreas. By the way, that's what this is. It's the pancreas, all right? And it's a good test question. We'll go over it in a minute. Then you have things like quadrants, right? So like if I draw a line down the abdominal cavity and then I draw it in half, now I got one, two, three, four. Now I got four quadrants and that makes sense. So like my liver is in the right upper quadrant. By the way, right and left is your patient's right and left, okay? The stomach is in the left upper quadrant. You just have a bunch of guts down here in your left lower quadrant. And then the main attraction in your right lower qu quadrant would be your appendix. Now, how would they test that? They would have the model. So Mr. Torso Guy, you can like pull out the colon and it's that gray thing. And by the way, colon and large intestines are interchangeable words. And right where the small intestines and the large intestines hook up, like right there on that model, you would see what looks like a gray pill. I just hope that this description kind of paints a picture. So that gray pill is the appendix, just in case they ask that, all right? Now regions, like I have nine regions, and so now I'm gonna turn this into a tic-tac board. I would start at the umbilicus. All right, the umbilical. Yes, I call it the umbilicus. I can call it whatever I want. All right, belly button, navel, okay? Now that's the dead center spot, okay? That's where everybody wants to put it, right? If I go above, that's gonna be epigastric. If I go below, that's hypogastric. Now let that be kind of your point of starting. And then if I go down below, I know I can't have three hypos in a row. So I know my hypochondriacs are up here, yeah. And then I know that my lumbars are my lower back. And then I have my iliacs, right? Which makes sense because this is the ilium region, right? Cool. So by the way, I just want to emphasize that too. When we're talking about nine, like the whole umbilicus, epigastric, and all that business, they use the word region, okay? Region. Whereas the other one is going to, they're going to utilize the word quadrant. 
pay attention to those words. All right. Now, while we're talking about all this orientation and everything, let's talk about serous membranes. You can see what looks like a dried up grocery bag, like a Kroger bag. <laughs> That's actually a serous membrane. All right. Now, if I have a serous membrane, yeah, it's okay to laugh. <laughs> if I have a serous membrane touching the organ, so let's say, hey, they pinned the heart, right? And the question, by the way, be very careful. They're gonna have like a number attached to that pin, and then maybe they'll have multiple index cards in front of the specimen. Make sure you're matching up that number with that right index card, with that correct space on your answer sheet. Believe it or not, the anxiety gets in the way and you'll put it in the wrong place. Don't do that. All right. So if the wording says, what serous membrane is touching this organ or covering this organ? Well, the first thing that should come to your mind is visceral. All right, serous membrane that is covering an organ or touching an organ directly would be a visceral layer. Then we have to put the fancy word for heart. All right, and so the fancy word is pericardium. Peri, P-E-R-I, like perimeter or peripheral, peripheral, going around. It's all right, you're smiling, you're laughing, Brian, that's all right, it's cool. So that means we're going around. It's a layer that goes around the heart and you know, like cardiovascular, cardio, so pericardium. That kind of makes sense, right? Now, if they were to pin this trash bag, we know, or well, yeah. They most likely will word it like, what serous membrane is lining this cavity? Ah. Uh, when they say, what I'm going for is parietal. Parietal is gonna line a cavity, all right? And typically they use the word cavity. Um, what if they say just identify this and they're pointing at this this top layer here You're gonna say parietal pericardium. Okay Now something they like to do is they like to put a pen in these flappy things called the lungs, right? But we don't say lungs. No, we use fancy language. We say pleura So once again, if they were to say Huh, what serous membrane lines this cavity? Well, the first thing you would say is oh, yeah, this is the abdominal cavity uh, Thoracic. Boy one take Thoracic, this is the thoracic cavity. All right, now if y'all fail, you can totally blame me. This is the thoracic cavity. I'm willing to take that heat. All right, so what serous membrane lines this cavity? Well, it's the thoracic cavity, so, and it lines the cavity, it must be parietal, so this is gonna be parietal pleura. You have to have deductive reasoning, all right? Now, if they put a pin in here and they say what's covering this organ, well then, you know it's covering the organ, now this is visceral, visceral pleura, right? Down here in the guts, this is the peritoneum, right? So if it's the small intestines and it says, you know, we pin the small intestines and it says, you know, what serous membrane is lining this organ or covering this organ, then you are going to say visceral peritoneum, okay? And then if it lines the cavity, the abdominal cavity, it is going to be the parietal peritoneum. I hope that makes more sense. I don't know. All right. Now, I kind of put a little focus on this curtain here. It's not a curtain, it's a diaphragm, right? And the diaphragm is gonna do a really cool thing where it separates our thoracic cavity from our abdominal cavity, all right? But if they were to pin the diaphragm and they were to ask what cavity is the diaphragm in, and really they wouldn't be that kind, they would just pin it and they say, what cavity is this in? What would be the answer? The answer is ventral. I gotta give them time to answer. In their head. <laughs> All right, so you might have been tempted at that point to say thoracic or abdominal, but the thing is, is like it's, it's separating those two cavities. It's not in those cavities. Remember that the whole front side is the ventral cavity. So the diaphragm is in the ventral cavity. That's a wonderful trick question they like to ask. While we're touching the diaphragm, let's, let's see some other questions they like to ask. They like to ask, what system or systems is this a part of? Well, to me, it looks like a muscle. Well, it is. So it's part of the muscular system. It's a really cool muscle that works 24-7, 365 days a year, and it helps push our lungs. So in all reality, it helps us breathe, all right? So it's part of the respiratory system as well. So there's three potential questions here. Maybe just identify, like they'd be that easy. I don't think so, because you know it's a diaphragm. Or what system or systems is this in? Muscular and respiratory. Or what cavity is this in? Ventral, all right? Let's start up at the top. I know, we've already done so much. All right, so right here, this is sometimes people call this the windpipe. 
All right, we're gonna call it the trachea because you get no points if you call it the windpipe. And it's part of the respiratory system. Now, if I go deep to the trachea, I'm gonna find this really cool garden hose, which is gonna be the esophagus, which is for digestion. All right, now, while we're up here in the neck area, you're gonna see two reds and two blues. Red is for artery, blue is for vein. Arteries take blood away from the heart, veins take blood back into the heart. All right, so they like to ask this question, but not on the cat. They like to ask it on a model. That Mr. Torso Man, if you see two red lines and one of them is uh, pinned and it's red at the neck, it's gonna be a carotid. If it's blue and at the neck, it's gonna be a jugular, all right? So red at the neck is carotid, blue at the neck is a jugular. All right, let's move on down. This big blue line that's above the heart is superior. That is the superior vena cava, all right? Moving on down, we're at the lungs, the heart. We talked about medial and lateral. We talked about the serous membranes. And then the diaphragm, let's, let's do a peekaboo right underneath. That looks like a shoestring, right? Well, don't put shoestring, you're not gonna get any points, right? Now, this little string here is actually holding the liver up. So your liver would fall to your toes if it wasn't hanging off your diaphragm. So this is a good test question. What is that thing? It's the falciform ligament. F-A-L-C-I-F-O-R-M ligament. It's the falciform ligament. Good test material, all right? Going down here, we got our liver. It's part of the digestion system. If I open it up, it's like a clutch purse. This little bag right here, that is the gallbladder right there. We know it's a little purse to hold bile. That's gonna emulsify fat. Just remember that for later. Then we got our stomach, right? If I go lateral to the stomach, this funky little organ right here, that's the spleen. All right, so they like to tag the spleen. I'm not gonna guarantee that they will, but they like to. And they like to ask the question, what system or systems is this a part of? Well, I like to think of the spleen as a graveyard for the red blood cells and the white blood cells. So red blood cells is the circulatory slash cardiovascular system, and then the white blood cells are part of your immune system, and that would be lymphatic. So the answer is circulatory and lymphatic, all right? Now, this has been completely manhandled a lot, <laughs> but this thing should be an apron, and this fatty apron should cover all this cute abdominal peritoneum area, right? Okay. That's called the greater omentum. Is that a good test question? Absolutely. All right, do I guarantee it? No way. <laughs> but our beautiful apron there is the greater omentum. You know how to spell that. Now, if I pull that up, like pulling up the dress, going underneath here, hey, woo! It's the phyeta meat again. How about that? But don't put phyeta meat, you get no points. This is the pancreas. So typically they like to either pin the spleen, where is that, there it is, or the pancreas. Or maybe both, who knows? Barton's going pretty crazy these days. All right, so what system or systems is this a part of? Hmm, well, the answer is it is part of the endocrine system. <laughs> it's okay if you laugh. Okay, so it's part of the uh, endocrine system and it's also part of digestion. Real cool thing here, take a look at this. This pancreas, the head, actually bumps right into funnel cake. That's not funnel cake. This is the small intestines. And we know all the magic of digestion happens in the small intestines. So pancreas is actually part of the digestion system. And like I said, endocrine. Boy, I keep repeating that, it must be important. All right, so then here's our funnel cake, the small intestine, it's the next part. Cause your food goes down the esophagus to the stomach and then it pops out here into the small intestines and then of course it goes to the large intestines and it makes poop. All right, so the way we think of our small intestines is DJIs, all right? D is for duodenum or duodenum, however you wanna pronounce it. I don't care, just spell it right. And then the middle part is the jejunum. And then the last part of our small intestines is our ileum, okay? Now, here's the truth. They don't know where the jejunum starts or stops. So most likely, or I'll just say, hmm, what do they like to mark? Hmm, this top part right here. And usually people get confused because sometimes like they remove the liver. I don't know what they do in there. It's like, I don't know. But just remember, like here's the stomach and then this first little curve here, that tells you this is the first part of the small intestines. So don't get confused. That's the duodenum, all right? By the way, if I fan this out, look at that, isn't that pretty? Yeah, 
Okay, that's the mesentery. Mesentery from now on is like the fanciest way ever to say guts, all right? Like you think of the mess hall in the army. Okay, then you've got your large intestines, okay? So the large intestine is made up of two parts. Remember, we just went over the three parts of the small intestines. Now we have two parts for the large intestines. This actually looks like the letter C. That's cecum. And then the last part is the sigmoid. And then, of course, you have your rectum. This little cute little purse right here, this bladder, <laughs> urinary bladder, of course. Um, these little kidney beans, these little beans, kidneys. They're in the retro peritoneum. Of course, if I have a blue and red line going to the kidneys, that is going to be a renal vein and artery. Renal is just really fancy for kidney. It's really no big deal. Now, if you see a model of the kidneys and you see a little piece on top of the kidneys, which is going to be like an orangish color, that's the adrenal gland. Okay? Sometimes they like to test on that. The adrenal gland, of course, is part of the endocrine system. And then you would have, now, obviously, this has been ripped off, but you would have a line from the kidney to the bladder, and that'd be your ureter. Okay? You don't hit the urethra until you're letting pee go free. Like, we I'm free, the urethra, right? Yeah. Okay. Another thing I want to point out on the cat, they could ask this on the cat, or they could ask this on Mr. Bones, is you can see that we have this really tight shoestring kind of thing going here. That is the sciatic nerve. Okay? That is the sciatic nerve. All right. Brian, did I cover it all? I think so, yeah. I hope so. That's it. Good luck. <laughs>